Good afternoon. I am Hyunchal Kim. First of all, it's an honor for me to present in this important occasion. Many presenters provided good training sessions. Mine would be not so much about training, but more about sharing my own experience from the field. We began this session with ICHQ Trio. Q11, Q12 are um, in effect now, 13 and 14 are being drafted at this moment. So the scope would not just be about Q trio, having more um, wider interpretation of the guidance. Um, I would like to talk about the lessons that we can take from the these guidance. ICH guideline is for international harmonization and to follow the um, state-of-the-art technology. We started um, introducing this in early and mid-2000. ICHQ Trio um, have been effective since then, and uh, 10 years have passed now. And I'll talk about the application of these um, guidelines for the past 10 years and share the practical interpretation and application of those guidelines in the field. These are internationally harmonized guidelines rather than binding legal um, requirements. While understanding and following the guidelines, we um, can still look for ways to have more flexible quality system design. So this is the background of my presentation. There are two main parts in my talk. First is the regulatory interpretation. Regarding ICHQ series, what kind of expectations does a regulatory authority have? The vertical axis shows risks from manufacturing site. The horizontal axis talks about product and process risks. ICHQ10 is for the vertical axis, the manufacturing site risk mediation methods. Pro regarding product and process risk, ICHQ8 talks about ways to mediate or reduce the product and process related risks. The star mark is risk management tools that will be utilized to implement Q10 and Q8. So our ultimate goal is through continuous improvement, reduce risk as close as to zero. That is the goal of ICHQ series. This is based upon product life cycle, the same ICHQ series. To your left, process, material, and facilities. Starting from design of process materials and facilities all the way up to delivery um, to patients. So it includes the whole process. To the left, for development, Q8 covers the development phase to the right, including manufacturing and distribution and delivery. ICHQ10 talks about these areas in the overall cycle. 
quality risk management is discussed in Q9. When Q3 series is applied, the ultimate destinations that we want to reach is explained here. We start from process understanding. The final is post-approval change management. And then there is a risk uh, circle. By applying Q8 and Q9, process understanding scope of process understanding gets bigger and risk gets reduced. Simple and minor post-approval change management is upgraded to continuous improvement. CMC review inspection, company quality systems size remain the same as prior to Q8 and Q10. By applying Q10 and Q9 in, uh, on the second stage, the process understanding pie becomes much larger. And with ICHQ10, CMC review and inspection effort are reduced. The yellow circle talks about continuous improvement, not just a simple management of the changes. So the overall risk becomes really small at this stage. Through this uh, diagram, ICHQ 8 and 10, and nine, when applied, can bring about a lot of benefits. Previous speakers already showed the same slide to you, and I'm sure you're familiar with this slide from ICHQ10. Unlike previous speakers, For clinical products and commercial products, how can we understand pharmaceutical quality system in Q10? ICHQ10 requires product life cycle management from development and discontinuation across the whole process, pharmaceutical quality system is supported. Those from the industry would already understand that Clinical product GMP, which was a gray area in the past, we see clearer uh, regulations and stricter controls. That is the latest um, trend. Within GMP box, GMP of the past were mainly focusing on two stages to the right. However, pharmaceutical quality system of ICHQ10 brings in product development and technology transfer into the scope of GMP. Certain aspects of the development, the latter part of the uh, development through clinical product GMP is now um, under GMP boundary. major pillars of product life cycle management. First, management responsibility. GMP of the past were responsibility of um, manufacturing and quality. 
but the management responsibility is becoming more important. No matter how perfect the theory is, resources um, are not provided appropriately. We won't be able to realize the theory. So that means strong commitment and ownership from the management is required. Pharmaceutical quality system is composed of um, four factors. Uh, process performance and product quality monitoring system, CAPA change management system, and management review. Pharmaceutical quality system to be implemented. Uh, there are tools required such as knowledge management and quality risk management. Stepping away from ICH for a while, let's take a look at the uh, changes in GMP trends. In the past, it was mainly about manufacturing site and continuous maintenance and control of the already proven information and data for the initial development and product release and post management regarding uh, already submitted approval data. With the introduction of PQS, major changes um, have, have been introduced. For example, the scope is extended from the purchasing of ro um, raw material to um, sales management across the whole product life cycle. Quality by design scientific approach is introduced. And last but not least, in the past, it was mainly about dealing with what already happened and finding for the justification. But now, it's more proactive and preemptive uh, management to make sure that there are no potential issues in the future. I talked about ICHQ trio. So far, uh, I talked about guidelines. EU, US FDA, Japan, Australia, and other countries are uh, major um, markets. And let's take a look at the changes in EU GMP. After ICH guidelines being implemented, here is the information about the changes from 2011 till 2015 for four years. EU GMP uh, became aligned with ICH guideline. Let's look at the major changes. The title of EU GMP was Quality Management, Man Managing Quality in Manufacturing Site. But now it's the same as ICHQ10, Pharmaceutical Quality System. The same concept from ICH is introduced. As for the personnel, the contents of ICHQ10 was introduced adding context about consultant for premises and equipment cross um, contamination section is updated ICHQ series uh, its basic concept is that it does not have a clear direction. Rather, it recommends companies to do risk assessment to determine the um, acceptable range. In the past, there was a separation requirement, for example, penicillin and cell um, toxicity. There must be dedicated premises and equipment. But that requirement is now updated as a result of the toxicology toxicity um, test results. When deemed necessary, then go for the uh, designated 
premises. For documentation, electronic document is added. And for production, the cross-contamination ma uh, management and the GMP requirement for API. For quality control, laboratory control, um, technology transfer regarding analytical method and OOS result um, assessment is added. For outsourced activities, it was a very narrow scope, contract-based. But all of the outsourced activities must be um, controlled. And the title also changed from contract manufacture and analysis to outsourced activities. And for um, complaints, quality effects, and product recalls, risk-based assessment and investigation uh, was added. So by looking at this table, after the announcement of ICH guideline in major territories, those contents uh, from the guidelines are um, aligned as part of the requirement in EU GMP. So based on the interpretation of the regulations, we can say and identify about seven to eight keywords from the latest GMP. These keywords are the ones that we can feel from the field, whether it is manufacturing or the quality and others. These are the keywords that we have to be uh, paying more attention in doing our works. The first keyword is the quality management. Quality is not the responsibility of only the operators or the functions that are uh, directly related to the quality, meaning that the quality should be made needed at the enterprise level and it's the responsibility of the management. And second keyword is risk-based. So when we do something, we just cannot say that this is from USP, USP or this is from guideline rather than just saying it. We have to focus on our production site and our product and also develop the rationale based on the risk. And third keyword is science-based. And it is quite closely linked to the risk-based as a keyword. So when we make any uh, decision, it is not based on our intuition. It should be based on the science. When we design something, we have to design it based on the science. And fourth keyword is knowledge management. In GMP activities, actually, technology transfer is the most directly related to the knowledge management. As you know, PDA report is released on the technology transfer, and there are many literatures on this issue. This means that technology transfer is a very important activity and this is because if we do something wrong about the technology transfer, then the development that we have done before and the, the future commercial manufacturing cannot have a solid bridge or linkage. So the development result will just uh, become invalid. So technology transfer is important. Fifth keyword is the continuous improvement. In the past, we had uh, days. We have the days when we have to comply with the set rules. But now, rather than doing that, we try to focus on and introduce improved and latest technologies. And this is very clear in many different uh, regulators. The sixth keyword is trend analysis. 
in the past that was important to interpret each event. But now we have to look at the trend incorporating all different events. And we also extract the matrix. And we look at the trend, not the after the fact manner, but it should be in time manner. And so that we can have some proactive response to the events. And the last keyword here is product life cycle. From the development till the discontinuation of the product, over the whole life cycle of the product, we need to implement the management. So, so far, I talked about ICH guideline from the regulation perspective, what the regulators expect to see and the recent trends. And from now on, not from the regulation perspective, but from the industry perspective, I'd like to talk about how we can understand ICH guideline and how to implement it. ICHQ10 has uh, some sections, and so I will go over section by section here. For overall, the assessment of dossier and inspection will change. In the past, the regulators uh, put forward some requirements, and they looked at whether these are complied or not. But more recently, the suitability of the measures uh, considering the companies or the manufacturers' characteristics is considered, meaning that when inspectors come to the site, they ask whether we are utilizing suitable methodologies or not. The second is, in the past, the final release test and the manufacturing method were validated in the past, but now the step-by-step -step parameters and the controls are validated and verified. Whether it is NDA or BLA, the time of the review of the dossier and then at the time of the inspection, these things are reviewed and the questions were asked in order to identify whether the parameters and the controls are in place. If you look at in more detail, bio burden, endotoxin management, sampling point during the IPC, and the level management, whether the level is appropriate or not. So these are the questions asked. In the past, the bio burden and endotoxin, for those matters, if they are removed or if we have the good filters, then the problems will go away. But now, the regulators also take into consider the risk of the residual bio burden or endotoxin or metabolites, enzymes, or toxins released from the bio burdens. All these things also need to be managed, in particular for the aseptic finished product. Right before the final filtration, bio-burden level need to be well managed, and that level of the management is deeply discussed. And for the quality assessment methodology, whether it is appropriate or not. In the past, the widely used method of assessment were accepted, but now, whether those methodologies appropriate or not should be discussed. For example, endotoxin recovery. When we measure endotoxin, and we con usually conduct the masking with the components, the surrounding components, 
And in that case, the endotoxin cannot be recovered very well. And that is called as LER, or low endotoxin recovery. So it is inspected quite seriously. And another thing is the popsit. Utilizing popsit, the pre-use, before we use, and post-sterilization, the filters integrity is tested whether the filter is working well or not. This has been strengthened recently. And third change is that the submission requirement has been checked in the past, but now uh, regulators and inspectors look more into the structure of the uh, document, and they try to understand the rationale of the submissions structure or the contents. For example, in the past, when the regulators look at the facilities, age back and differential pressures were important. But more recently, the layout is reviewed from the design perspective, whether it is uh, suitable, appropriate. And uh, the major focus would be like the fermentation and recovery lines uh, have buffer zones to prevent cross contamination or the flows, the flows, whether they are well separated. A second example would be environmental monitoring. In the past, whether the environmental monitoring is being done or not, and the result of it is acceptable or not, were the very important question. But more recently, the question is more about whether the personnel or waste and materials uh, have a solid flow, movement flow. And materials is important in the past. After the liabilization till the capping, the transportation of that two point seems to be risky. So before the complete pack capping, uh, the material should be moved and transported in the grade A area. And after the sterilization, The product need to be moved and transported to the reps or the grade A area. And that movement flow need to be also managed in the grade A condition. And third example can be aseptic processing validation, media field testing. In the past, the result was important whether it was acceptable or not. But now, it's more about the operation condition in the grade A area or environment is appropriate or not. So these are the changes in the inspection recently. The next one is the management responsibility. Management seem to have different mindset, that's quite sure. The poor quality management will lead to the dropping of the project. And because of the quality issue, the timeline can be delayed. So these were experienced by the leaders, the managers. And this, if, the, if that happened, it will uh, be the case where we lose opportunities or we lose money. And then what should be further considered at the manufacturing site in order to uh, accommodate such increased responsibility of the managers? It's not like the managers or the leaders just to say that, well, you are doing such a good job. I will just support you, whatever you like to have. So what we do is formulate review board. Maybe different names are used 
for different companies, but I believe most of you are already having the review board of kind. And the quality need to be well incorporated into the management objectives and goals. The companies always talk about revenue and operating profit as their goals. However, they need to be interpreted as quality, failure rate, or failure ratio need to be managed and that should be well defined in the management uh, objective or goals. By doing so, we can invite more interest and more participation from the leaders. So if we have some steps to increase or engage more managers or the leaders, the step one would be invoking interest among the leaders, the management. Then step two would be maintaining such invoked interest. Here, we have to make it possible that managers can have the quality index or indicators quite easily accessed. So that would be the QMS. So the managers can have easy access to the quality indicators. And the step three is the managers and the quality department have to achieve this at the end of the day. The QMS monitoring, through the QMS monitoring, investment and human resources management need to be aligned. If that is possible or established, and then in the quality management, the managers or the leaders will increase responsibilities. In product life cycle, we talked about the investigation of product or IP. I already shared in the previous slide, um, the product lifecycle management is important, and now it even covers the gray area, which was the IP GMP guideline. ICQ5EA, the comparability guideline, the comparability study has been strengthened. From preclinical until the phase three of the clinical studies, the levels of the quality management element would be different. But there are two important fillers here. One is change control and the other is the validation, verification, qualification. For the preclinical stage, actually this IP is not guaranteed whether it will go for phase three or not. So if we have a very strong con change control, it will delay the project and it will reduce the amount of the data that can be generated. The validation for that validation, that is also true. So at the different level, the level of the change control need to be decided. And for validation, whether we go for validation or for simplified verification or qualification. So we have to set the level for that. As we move from one stage to another, technology will be have uh, will have to be transferred, and knowledge management need to be done for each step that is important in the uh, IPGMP. And many speakers talked about QBD. For QBD. Rather than talking about the details of QBD, I want to share my thought about whether we have to implement QPD, uh, QBD uh, from the manufacturing perspective. Personally, as a person who is in charge of site quality, 
for IP and manufacturing commercial products, I would say yes, the QBD is needed. Why? First of all, I want to have the knowledge transfer, not the data at the technology transfer. From the development phase, we receive the developed product. At the time, we usually receive development report and we receive the refined data. So at the commercial line, when we uh, try to implement the data or the process, it was not that easy. So it's better to understand what happened during the process, which is knowledge. So not the data, but the knowledge need to be transferred. It will reduce trial and errors in, uh, during the uh, commercial uh, manufacturing process. And development product and commercial manufacturing need to have the scale up step. QBD provides the concept that the development should be done, uh, the scale up independently. So if the QBD is implemented well, it will help us, us a lot in scaling up. For deviation and failure, we conduct the investigation. And there we need to have more knowledge from the development phase. If that is the case, we can have better investigation and we can decide more accurate decision whether we release the product or not. And when we do the change control, we have to review impact of change on the product. If there is a QBD, it will help us a lot. So these are the advantages of the QBD. So that's why I said, yes, we need to introduce QBD. However, there are hurdles to be overcome came in order to implement QBD. First of all, the benefit of the QBD need to be well understood by the management. So far, the management does not understand that very well. So with the QBD, the failure cost of the, the quality failure cost will drop and the production capacity will be increased. These kind of benefits should be well communicated to the management. And also the pilot is important in order to implement QBD. It requires a lot of investment, and we need to have good understanding of the statistical and mathematical model. So we need to have experts on it, but it's not easy to find such experts in the market now. But if we overcome these hurdles well, then the QBD will be well established in the field. And process performance and product quality monitoring is important, as I said. And to have that, uh, the process validation should be implemented. If you look at the table, left side, you can see the classical PV, and right side, new PV. So in the table, you can see the difference. So if you look at the definition, there is a clear difference. For classical PV, it is more about continuous or consistent production. For new PV, it's more about collection and evaluation of data, risk assessment and control strategy settings. So all the process of it is focused on. It's not about the production itself, but it's more about the stage it or the stepwise process of manufacturing from the very early stage till the consistent quality monitoring. So when we design the process, control strategy is important. 
how we can manage our product, through what measures. So these things need to be designed well. And at the stage two, when we start the commercial manufacturing, the process need to be stringently managed. And at the stage three, even though we are done with the process validation at the uh, stage two now, even at the stage three, we continue with our efforts to uh, so that we can conduct the trending and monitor whether our process is still valid and still good. When we submit for the BL BLA or NDA, we focus on these stages and tools, and of course, the inspections are also done accordingly. Next is the quality matrix from the process performance and product quality monitoring system. Actually, the quality matrix was first recommended or proposed by the regulators. They wanted to utilize it in the inspection. So the minimum in indicators will be used. And it's not about scoring of the companies. That's what regulators said. You can see on the uh, slide. The items for the quality matrix You can see on the picture, there are three circles. The right bottom, the indicators here, are the ones that the regulators wanted to have under the apple tree. It's easy to pick, and they are very good in terms of taste. If you look at that, that reject rate Complaints, OS, these are the recommended matrix by the regulators. And actually, the FDA are utilizing these matrix. If these are the matrix that the regulators wanted to use for industry, the industry Rather than focusing on the details or detailed indicators, they wanted to consider the products or the systems and the situations of the each different companies. So they wanted to, or it's better for the industry to target at this matrix. Left side, upper part. As you can see from the picture, the apples are bigger than the apples in the right bottom, but it's more difficult to pick because are they hanging? They are hanging higher. But if you are able to pick those apples, then you will taste them very well. There can be many benefits. And kappa. Kappa is needed. Because, as you can see from the picture, the left side is the development. Let's say you have the cost of one here. But if you have any issues in the commercial manufacturing stage, then the cost of failure would be like 1,000. So for the development phase, it's kind of the cost of failure. But for the commercial manufacturing, it's a different story. We do kappa because we want to try to control any potential uh, problems on the left side. So kappa is necessary activity to stop the repetition of the quality issue. And it's important to understand the root causes. When we have an event, we do investigation.
And what we do is this. I mean, usually sampling human error or assessment error. These are the outcomes or the uh, result of our investigation. And then comes the kappa with the training and education. That happens a lot. But this is not event, I guess. Because of that, the same event repeat, is repeated, and therefore we do the training again. So it's not like the real kappa. I mean, it's more focused on doing the kappa, the process itself. But it's more important to actually identify the root causes. And I think this is really important in term in doing kappa, meaning that we have to do the trending and qualification validation self inspection so that we can evaluate the effectiveness of kappa. And during the life cycle, the kappa need to be applied. I have gone through a lot of things and I may be a bit hasty in some slides, so I kindly ask your understanding and thank you for your attention.